going live, Suki, if you okay. want to. Okay. Yes, Suki, we're going live. <laughs> Here we are. We are live and we are, <laughs> we are global. And I hate to say it, but we are global like COVID. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I haven't said it in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm happy every Monday night, guys. I, and sometimes I'm not happy, but I'm happy every Monday night. Well, every Monday night and it's Monday morning and thank God it's only Rose is only getting up at 6 30 in the morning so speaking of Rose oh, I'm going to introduce myself I'm Dr. Tova Goldfine and this is TMS Roundtable Global and we are going on almost two years of this amazing show thank you Suki thank you Michael thank you Rose wow, it's two years. Wow. welcome yeah. good morning Tova from Australia good morning Michael and Suki today we're going to have a shout out for Michael and Suki. Their, their influence has been all over the world now. And Tova and I got together via Michael, as you all know, as we've told you over and over. And today we want to actually talk about the results of Michael making that movie and the people he drew into the movie and, and how they expressed their appreciation for Dr. Sano. And now I want to sort of get Michael to tell us the after story. Would that be the right way of putting it? The after yeah, story. Well, why don't we just call it the afterbirth? <laughs> uh, that's not very nice. That's not very nice looking. I can tell you, it's not nice. It, it's it's messy, but it's rich with nutrients. Good, excellent, <laughs> excellent. It, it has been, uh, yeah, it's been a really interesting, interesting process. And you know, the, the movie really began. Uh, in the, in the space where I'm sitting, like literally in this space, um, God, you know, 40 no, the kitchen, the kitchen was ago. The kitchen was much, much messier when your mom was cooking in her white, no, in her white room. No, yes, the kitchen. There. There. yes, the kitchen. <laughs> and it, it, it remains unchanged from, from then. Like, Pretty messy. The, the cabinets are there, the, mm -hmm. the uh, fridge filled with crap, you know, on the front of it. It's all the same. But right where we're sitting, right behind me, actually, that's um, that's there was a couch there where my dad slept one night because he'd had a little too much to drink at a party, and my mom was mad at him, and he'd gotten a little sick. But it turned out he had a, an ulcer that almost killed him. So he, I woke up to my dad. Um, the ambulance. Yeah, the ambulance. With, well, with the bloody stool all over, and him really sick, and then we got sent to the we got sent to the bus, and I had to send the ambulance here because they were pulling into the wrong house. Wow. Um, but, but the point being is, you know, the story begins with my dad, who's a psychologist um, who grew up in the Depression, and my mom, a social worker who grew up in the Depression, and kind of all the, the trauma that they brought with them into their adulthood. Um, and, and, you know, they were both very thoughtful people, but they also carried a lot of, a lot of mess. And so my dad had the ulcer, and then he had a... Um, we had, he had whiplash from a very small fender bender. It was in traction sitting right there. All, you know, it's, so it's all right here. That's when he got the book in the early eighties. And as a psychologist, when he got the book, I mean, and at that point it was probably mind over, um, or mind body prescription or something. I can't remember which one it was. I think mind over back pain was first. The first one, whatever it was, it was the first one. And he was like, Oh, this makes total sense. Like not, he wasn't a hundred percent, but he was 92% for many, many years after that. And he gave out that book, like, well, I mean, just to everybody. And my dad was a very cheap person, but he bought boxes of the book and gave it out. Amazing. All the time, Amazing. Because it was life-changing. I mean, like, you know, it, it's free. I mean, that the, the, the kind of the freedom that the idea that your emotions could, and the repression of them could be causing your pain and that it worked. I, I mean. It just speaks so highly. It speaks so highly of your dad's, intelligence his insight rose his his, his emotional his ability to understand yeah and, really? and he was very generous of spirit in a lot of ways and and that was one way and he but he was also <laughs> very forceful and he handed it out and said no this is going to fix you and and it did for a lot of people so it's always in my ether and anyway it's just interesting that we we're talking about it in terms of um when did the movie start and where does it go and so i'll, I'll kind of pull it back together here but um so for me, you know, then I had my own experience with some small back pains. And then I read the book because my brother had been healed and I was healed for 10 years. And by healed, I mean, I didn't have that same problem. But this is where it gets interesting is that even making the movie was a really important part of a healing process. And what I've, what's, what's 
come in this after period is just a clarity that that process will never stop. And if it does stop, it's like a shark, right? The shark has to keep swimming, has to keep moving water through its gills, or it is There's no an longer. amazing momentum. I mean, yeah. aside from Rose and I, we were just talking about in the two years, like possibly how many people have bought the movie in two years that Rose and I recommended to everybody. And even tonight, we sent it out to get to like 50 Facebook pages. And it's, yeah. it's, it's the energy, it's just building the evolution. It's because it's, it's so necessary, the movie. Don't you think so, Suki? It's like a, yeah. it's like a going to school to learn about so many things. Yeah, it's yeah. so necessary, and yet it's also really uh, metaphorical, and uh, you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready to dive into a story and not have it be all you know science and facts and facts and science, and um, and how important that is to connect the people. I think you know connect people to their emotions. Uh, and science helps. Um, I remember your brother was really into, you know, facts and science. He's right. more of a, you know, he's a social scientist and he wanted to know that it was underpinned, that, that Dr. Sarno's theories were underpinned by science, but then it was the actual metaphorical stories that, that helped him. And as long as he knew that, you know, at the, at the foundation, it was, there was solid science, which somehow he was convinced there was, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that's impossible to, to completely prove because it's like our humanity. And how, how, do, you, you, how do you study the human, the human mind and body? I mean, right. we're, we're a piece of well, art. Right, well, it's basically trying to apply math to art right. and you can really make some you amazing can. art with math, <laughs> um, but that it's not, it's, it's, it's expansive. And, and I think that, you know, we, before we even turned on the camera or we went live, we were talking a little bit about systems. And I think one of the things, you know, just as filmmakers, but also storytellers, we exist in this strange space in regards to systems, right? Like this movie doesn't really fit in terms of um, the film system because it didn't do what was expected as a documentary. A documentary is supposed to tell the story of Dr. John Sarno and is supposed to give you all the facts and none of this messy emotional nonsense garbage. Um, from that perspective, but also from the medical perspective. Well, we just need this perspective. So since it exists in the middle space, it's very hard to have it be a part of any system, right? So like um, hospitals aren't really interested in showing it because it's not very factual scientific and film theaters aren't really, into, or the film community didn't embrace it because it wasn't really what they expected. And like, why is this guy talking about his own shit? Like, who cares about this guy? Like, you know, I mean, that was literally every review. And so I'm, I'm not saying that to complain, but more to illuminate how ideas move through the world. And it's the constriction of those ideas, which is what underpins the problem to begin with. Mm -hmm. When we are told, don't think this, don't feel that, don't be that, and it comes, you know, as you were saying, in an early attachment period, it's really hard to break out of those. Mm. It feels like who yeah. we are, not what we think. And in a way, it becomes who we are. And that really becomes hard to shift. Can I butt in, please? No, you're being welcomed, Dan. Yeah. Please. Thank you. <laughs> I want to point out that it's through the cracks in the two systems that we get new understanding of things. Mm. Right. Mm. And just think of... Um, the guy with the penicillin, um, um, Fleming, you know, he he saw that the um, that the bacteria was destroyed by on, because the petri dish was out on the on the windowsill, and that and the sunlight on it, you know, there were more bacteria happening, and then this I don't know fungus or whatever was on the on the petri dish, and the bacteria was destroyed, and then we got penicillin. Right. So I'm maybe not using the right analogy. But I'm just pointing out Good that analogy. The, the medical system and the film system need to have a break. And also all the amazing movies that we see over the years that are memorable I are heard. never fitting into a system because us as humans or we as humans are so curious, we want right. to know more. And that's why I loved your movie because it's not factual in right. as much as I haven't got, when I sit down and watch it, I'm not watching an expert telling me anything. I'm watching an inquirer. I'm watching right. someone who's curious. And that fires my curiosity and the viewer's curiosity, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's no other way we, we could have made it 
and and I'm not, it's hard. Like when you talk about these complex things and these difficulties, it, it comes off as complaining. I actually don't even feel complaining. It's just more about like, let's understand it because we were talking about um, one thing I've really always wanted to do with the movie is have it form more connection. Mm. And, and you know, given, you know, the work that you guys do, that that plays out. But you see that you guys are not fully connected in that in that system. You're becoming connected because you're connecting so many people. But like I found it a little um, it's so hard because I'll like I'll read a book that's so connected to these ideas like. Um, what is it? Uh, what's uh, that guy's book? Which guy? Um, like the body keeps the score or something. You well, it's, it's the body keeps the score for one, but I'm talking about the other guy who wrote a book. Um, Jonah. Jonah. Doctor Wayne Jonas. Wayne Jonas. But I can't remember what it's called. That's what I'm here for. Oh, how healing works, right? And this is guy how healing works. The guy Wayne Jonas wrote this book, and it's he ran all these studies of studies for like the VA and other like looking at like twenty thousand different studies, mm -hmm. looking at the same thing to take all that data and make more sense of it. And what he came to the conclusion after many years was that 80% of healing comes from within. 20% is the healing agent and the healing agent may be uh, a drug, it may be a placebo, it may be the doctor touching you on your goddamn knee and saying, I hear you. That's a healing agent. Like literally that is, that intervention can only go so far, right? Wow. And so the, the problem that it, that is the medical system is the way we frame it is that it's actually the healing intervention that's doing 95% of the work. Mm -hmm. And that's just yes. absolute hubris and nonsense. But that's what systems do is they give an overinflated sense of power to people who have power. And then people don't want to let go of that power. And so like even Dr. Jonas, I reached out to him because, and it was odd. I'd gotten his book because um, my brother had gotten it from his agent. They had the same agent. And I was like, Oh my God, this is, this is so connected. So I wrote to him and he said, um, Oh, let me, let me give you to my assistant and he can um, he can help you. You can connect him. So I wrote to his assistant. And I had this long conversation with him and I sent him all these different people and I never heard back from him. So I wrote to him and he said, yes, it's just a little too overwhelming. It's too much. What well, how are you going to connect with all your colleagues if you refuse to even connect with the people who aren't directly related? And instead you're staying just within your little system and your little system is ignoring you, right? So I looked, that guy, that book, How Healing Works, it was put out by like Simon & Schuster, a big company. Not one goddamn review of the book, right? Like, so these things get lost because the people stay in their lane and are unwilling to. And so he's got his Twitter page and he's got his stuff and he does stuff, but nobody's paying any attention to him. However, if he connects with Dr. Clark and they connect with Dr. Schubner and they connect with people, Dr. Mate, and, and, and thankfully, slowly that's happening. But it's really frustrating to me how unwilling people are to interact in a way that needs to happen to elevate it. Well, I'm because sure, Mate, I'm sure, I don't know much about it, but I'm sure, and let me know what you think, Suki and Michael and Rose. I'm sure Mate's getting a lot of like hot air about his latest stuff. Like he's losing a lot of like medical colleagues, don't, wouldn't you think? No, I don't think so at all. And in fact, when I, I he, you know, he's in our movie and I sent him a link and I said, could you share this with your colleagues? And he wrote back, I don't have any colleagues. All the entire email. <laughs> that was my life. So he's making his own way. And I would say, in, to his great credit, he's actually weaving these people back in. So now he recently had that, a new screening of his book, The Wisdom of Trauma. I mean, excuse right? me. He's got 10 YouTubes about authenticity and attachment and addiction. Yeah, yeah. And there were just right. 10. <laughs> Wait, no, but, 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 but he didn't feel like he, when yeah. I would, this was right when we made the movie he didn't feel connected to any colleagues. He felt wow. completely ignored and he made his own way. And now he's re he's connected with all of those people who have made their own way. Mm -hmm. And right. the problem is, and they are there. So it's rising up, but I'm saying like within this same field, he just did his wisdom of trauma screening again. And he included Steve Ozanich and Dr. Schubner and Alan Gordon as part of the Q and A's afterwards. So it is slowly happening, but it's really hard because everyone's egos get in the way, you know? And, and I think that, that, that also slows things down. And so in a way, like, you know, and I'm, I'm coming from a position of someone who's has been trying to lift up Dr. Sarno's work. Right. And I think that because there's so much resistance to it, people are coming after him, don't want to attach themselves to it because they feel like that will drag them down and get them dismissed. So we're seeing that. So he's, it's easy to ignore him there. And it, it's, you know, it's just such a weird world. Like, again, we're talking about, 
the after process. And it's taken me a minute to get there, but it's really interesting to just see the science is coming out. But even with the science, none of the, uh, or there's the great thing in the Washington Post, but the New York Times article was just a horrendous car wreck of a shit show in terms about of- what, how, About what, about the movie? No, no, about- do, about the study. Shit. Yeah, uh, well, there, was, there was the science writer for the Times. There was, she was billed as a writer of science who had been saved by the book, but she thought it was woo nonsense and she still had trouble explaining it or talking about it. This was a couple of weeks ago. So it was a month and a half after the studies had come out and I'd sent all the studies to the editor mm -hmm. and they didn't include it. They didn't even talk about the studies. Wow. But how does, no, it get to be in, yeah, how does it get to be in 80 countries how does it get to be shown in 80 countries? And well, how does you know, Tarno's I mean, book to get to be in 30 languages? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, again, it's not, I'm really, it's not complaining. It's just yeah. looking at the reality of the landscape. It is amazing that the film is reaching people and it's all word of mouth. And, and I agree, it's largely with the work that you're doing. Um, yeah, but I, want to, I want to interrupt you like yeah, for a minute. You I want to ask you and Suki right. something, Suki something. Um, uh, my sense, and it could be my idealistic. I mean, my sense is that this is, this is the most. Is this your most popular movie? You're brought you the most. So you don't people stop you in the supermarket and say, "Oh my God, you famous redhead! You, I saw you naked in the movie." Like, are people stopping you everywhere? People, I think uh, this is my feeling that this has risen, Vimo and 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 all the rage. And I mean, you're and who what you guys are doing? Well, it's interesting because it. You know, I agree that in a in a large way it has it has spread and it has spread slowly and, and surely. It's like a you know the the tortoise and you know it's definitely spreading throughout the world. And but the impact of that um, you is is more indicated online than not in the supermarket. Okay. For sure. <laughs> definitely not <laughs> here in Chapel Hill. Does anyone stop me to say anything about that film? But uh, and so that's why, and, and Michael enjoys being online. And so he tells me about all this, this progress. <laughs> well, I, okay, he doesn't enjoy it. I don't it. enjoy it, but he, I do it. He, yeah, he's, he's a tireless worker for the that's, film, yeah. Which, yeah. which is also, it's not the tortoise on its own, you know, spreading across the world. It's the tireless work that Michael has put into this film. And, you know, just the belief that he has in, in the foundational knowledge that Dr. Sarno had um, which, you know, can't be denied. And so as the word gets out, it's just like, oh, you know, I hadn't thought of that. And so people are constantly contacting Michael about it and, and connecting with him as the person telling his personal story, his universal story of emotions, pain, you know, uh, it, it's all basically in a way, it's, it's an interesting film. I, you know, out of all the ones we've made, it, it it can it keeps going. It's an energizer bunny. Right. And, and um I, I wanna, isn't Sarno uh, like like Elvis? Like isn't he much more popular yeah. now? Yeah, 50 million uh, uh, Sarno fans <laughs> can't be wrong. <laughs> I made that meme the other day. I actually I, I made a joke about that on Twitter or something, and someone immediately sent back the meme with his face over Elvis's, and it was awesome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, someone just made a comment, which is so yeah. true. Like, again, it's not, it, it's not complaining. I, I, I'm just trying to be realistic about it. And um, I agree. I, I've, I found so much power in uh, Nicole Sachs's increasing ability to communicate these ideas mm -hmm. in ways that just really connect. I mean, like literally twice a week, I'll send uh, a Nicole Sachs uh, um, uh, post to my daughter because it's just really speaks to a lot of struggles that younger people have. And, um, and just like they're the things I'm trying to communicate to her, but sometimes it's, you know, as a parent, I'm not able to, but her work really does. Mm -hmm. And again, like there's also um, Hillary Jacobs Hendel's work, I think is yeah. just really, really important in terms of this. And the thing that I'm saying is how do we get all these things connected? Because if you have all these free um, floating radicals, they don't really, they well, don't have- they are connected. I mean- They are know connected. Right. These yeah. these coaches that Rose and I, I mean again we have eighty shows of different people all about this topic, yeah. mm -hmm. and and you can't believe some of these coaches they are booked they have waiting lists yeah. right, and right. they've healed from Sarno and went ahead and yeah. did this work I mean people became coaches after we had them on our show because they got yeah. so excited and yeah. I think you and Suki should open up really a home business mm -hmm. of you know 
a yoga and TMS, whatever. But um, the question is, I, I just rose. Don't, don't you see? I feel like it's 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 multiplying. It's mitosing very quickly, especially at, around. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I, I'm I'm just I'm what I'm talking about is looking back over these. What is it? It's a, five years now mm -hmm. since we put this movie into the world. It was five years ago, in November. Wow. It took you ten years to do the show, new movie. No, we, no. We started making the movie in 2004, and then we did it for like a year and a half, and we filmed a little bit, but we really just couldn't figure out how we were going to do it. We didn't have the resources, mm -hmm. and there was nobody interested. Like we, we applied for all these grants, and we got turned down for all of them, and we just, we just didn't have the means. Um, but when it happened again, that's when we started it again. We had a, we had a little more knowledge, but also I, things were more clear and. It was interesting. So when we tried to make the movie the first time, there was so much resistance and so little connection. And when we started again, there was other people had written things that connected. Like the one of the foundational things I saw was Jonah Lehrer's um, "Why Science Is Failing Us," which connects to what we're talking about. Like it works for a while, but when it gets overindulged in its own specifics, and I, I don't even think he fully articulated some things about like the problems with randomized control trials and how that just limits the information that comes in. We're not looking, we're just basically with the randomized control trial, you say, we're not going to include emotional aspects because that makes the, the data too messy. Like you can, you don't have any clarity there. So let's just, we'll just do age race and you know, a couple of other things and figure it out, but we're not going to actually ask anybody about their emotions because it's unclear. It's not really scientific. But it's kind of like, it's half of the data. I mean, our minds and our body are not disconnected. So we don't have the data about our, our own, our emotional state. It, it, it renders the, this data so meaningless in so many ways. And then you see how that, how that plays out in terms of all these things. Like we say, we don't understand why we, why we have them. We, we, we have no known, known etiology for any of the autoimmune issues. But we do know it's not caused by the emotions. <laughs> Like, how can you say that if you're not actually including any data about emotions? When in fact, actually it's being increasingly proven that the emotions are a profound causative factor. Are they the only one? No, but it's not math. We want everything to be like clear and precise in everything we do. And it's just not like that. And so that's become increasingly clear. You know, I'm talking about in terms of like the process after making it. And I, I keep, we keep veering away from that, but the process after making it is, you know, the first question I got asked after every screening is, are, are you healed now? And, uh, and you know, my, my joke response was, I have this incurable disease called um, being alive mm -hmm. and it's gonna catch up to me and there's, there's no cure for it. Well, never, I don't think we'll ever find a cure for that. And it's, it's a horrendous disease. <laughs> you know, we have some good days and some bad days, but we never get over it. And, um, and that's really what it is. And the truth is though, I think the more you go on that, I'd say our true healing path, which is, you know, taking care of yourself physically, taking care of yourself emotionally and um, recognizing how important both of those are. And sometimes when we're weak emotionally and physically, we need a healing agent that is say a pharmaceutical or someone to talk to who can put us on the path. It, it doesn't mean that we are capable of healing ourselves completely. Cause in fact, I don't think we can fully heal without community because a big part of ourselves is connectivity. Right, which is another reason your show is so important because it gives people some somewhere to come and say, okay, I feel heard, I feel listened to, I feel connected. And I, I think that's essential um, as part of healing. But as you were saying, we started the movie in 2004 and people weren't ready. Right. It was really difficult. We had to wait another seven years, years. Yeah, yeah, to restart it once your back went out again. And then it became clear that certain elements, you know, that people had come a certain distance and we're re more ready to understand. And and now, and then the film came out four and a half years ago, because it was 2017. But we first showed it 2016 at the Doc NYC. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I think about when we made it. But it was really distributed in 2017. And then, so there was that, and then that element, you know, we'd come a certain distance from 2011 when we start restarted the film. And, and now at this point, it is just almost like an explosion. I mean, it feels like an explosion in the in the last two years. Right. 
in terms of awareness, et cetera. But, um, but, so, but that's what happens a lot with our work is it happens too early. Mm -hmm. it comes, it's a little ahead of the curve. So it's not really within the, it's not in the, in the general understanding, right? So one thing we know- I'm gonna interrupt you again, but Rose, do you wanna say anything before I interrupt? <laughs> No, why, why, what makes you think that I want because to Because I'm just, you know, because, so, you know, I want to say, and this was Rose's idea. Rose has amazing ideas. She, yeah. I, I, but there are many people, I mean, we have a study here. We have a, stu a research study going on. I know nothing about research, but there are so many people who have healed from this movie and I'd like to yeah. do a research project. Do you have any idea how many people have healed from your movie? I mean, you, it's, it, I, we, we haven't, yeah, even, we don't I mean, even know. We don't even know. No, no, it, and so much of it's autoimmune disease. Right. Yeah. So, well, so, let me chip in here for a moment. Yes. Do you remember, Michael, the lady that phoned me on her way home from the cinema mm -hmm. to say she told her husband how upset she was about whatever he did or and didn't do? And I can't she, remember. She said, you said it in a, different, in a saltier way, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> and... Her back pain left. By the right. time she got from Melbourne to Frankston, her yeah. back pain had gone. No. Yeah. I was a, a lovely, lovely um, oh, message. I, I, I was got just from thinking her. one of the things I think has actually made it a little bit harder is before, especially before the pandemic, we were able to do screenings and then you have that experience. And I, I mean, the experience of having, so this is like we saw it in Israel, we saw it in Australia. When you're actually in a room with a lot of people having, again, a social and common experience of it, it's, it's really quite powerful. And so we haven't had that for a couple of years. And so we feel a little bit disconnected from that. But I, I mean, I had, I mean, I had one story, I think I told you, I was screening it. There was a guy, um, Michael Harris, who connected with me. He's a yoga, um, yoga business instructor. So he's like, does yoga, but he had, he had alcohol problems and cured himself through yoga. And he saw the movie and he totally was really uh, profoundly affected. And he helped me really pack the house from when I went to this film festival in Bend, Oregon. And there was a woman, she was sitting in the handicap row and it was the most insane experience where like we had to kind of delay the movie a couple minutes because she had needed help getting in. And after the movie, I said, you know, I didn't say, I said, instead of saying, are there any questions? I said, is there anything anyone wants to say? Like, does anybody have anything that it brought up for them? And she raised her hand. So I went around and I held it and she said, um, I'm feel emotional. And that was, it was a really intense screening because it was oversold and a really big theater. And she took the microphone and she said, um, I've had 27 surgeries and I had a do not resuscitate, but I died on the table in the last surgery. And against my will, they brought me back to life. I have another one scheduled for next week, but I was horribly abused as a child. And now I understand what the hell is going on and I'm not having any more surgeries. And it was like, I mean, it was pin drop intense, just me kneeling in front of her. And it, this went on for like, two or three minutes. <laughs> like, what do you do after that? And I mean, you know, she still struggled to get out of there, but like this weight had lifted off her. And then there was a whole series of people that same evening where they would come up and what happens is, you know, I mean, anybody who's ever struggled to kind of become aware of something, they know it's there and they're pushing it. And, it, and then the movie, I think oftentimes brings it to here and you can feel it. Someone will come up to you. That's right. Yeah. Uh, come back. Oh, they're frozen. Come back. Yeah. Maybe they're going in and out. Yeah. That's it. The movie takes you yeah. to the heart, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And I, you know, yeah. takes you to the heart via the movie. Like, sorry, should I put it this way? The, his story takes you to his, yeah, to his heart, I suppose. Yeah. And yeah. to his suffering. And yeah. then you can actually um, have empathy for that and empathy for your own suffering yeah. within that. Completely, yeah. Rose. It's, yeah. And I remember when Michael was in Israel, he said to me, I'm going to say to the audience, because we were translating it to Hebrew, because he said to the person who was translating, please um, um, please l listen to the movie with your heart. And I didn't really understand that at the time. He yeah. said, please, I'm I want them, I'm going to say and tell the translator to tell the people to listen to listen to watch the movie with your heart and i was thinking why don't i get that like what's because i've learned so much in the past two years i mean above what we've known about sarna there's been an incredible 
like explosion of understanding and the people we've met have, have transformed us. And now I say to people when they do that, like, please watch it with your heart. And I'm not really sure what I mean by that because, but it's, it is, we, we're, we, we're so in our head, we're so, you know, disconnected, whether it's from the trauma or whether it's just from, because what we, we do, we, we do, we, we are all excellent at doing, and we all have to learn a little better at being. And it's fascinating to me what's been going on. And it feels like this movie is very popular now, and John Zarn is very popular, and you know, but I think what Michael's talking about is like, there's a still small, like in the, how do you see it? Well, I just know that Michael gets it. Yeah. yeah. He says to, to, to the audience, watch it through your heart, not through your mind. Yeah. Cause yeah. your mind won't take you there. Your yeah. mind is your cautionary, your cautionary thing. You know, be careful. Watch those steps. Don't yeah. climb too high. That's yeah. what your mind is doing. Whereas your heart is saying, be open, be aware of the world, and oh, I, I, and your mind, your mind, your no, and your mind is like being defensive. Oh, with mind body, oh, it's like like your mind is already protecting you. Yeah, protecting you from from a danger that isn't there, right. unfortunately. Right. And of course, the danger was there earlier on, right. and that's why your mind is alert. Right. But the right. but the danger has passed. Right. But the mind part of it, part of you, wants to stay on alert. Right. So when Michael says, watch it from your heart, you see Michael suffering. And as he mentioned about his dad having the ulcer, those little boys took themselves off yeah. to the bus yeah. and, and directed the ambulance because they became self-sufficient because of that sort of tension right. or whatever that was in their yeah. household. And nobody said to, to them, everything's going to be okay, boys. When you come home from school, I'll be here. No one yeah. stopped and said that. So they left with no. this... Yeah, heavy heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and yeah. even when little Harper says to him, Dad, it's okay. Someone else can be awesome today. I love that. <laughs> oh, my I God, she's that. all grown up right now. No, it was like yeah. Fiona. I think it was Fiona. Oh, was it? Okay, I can't remember yeah. now. But, yeah, it and, was just so lovely. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I want to ask them, I think Suki will answer, I want to know what it was like, like, being around each other. Like, they're a married couple and they're making this movie and Michael's – it just must have been fascinating experience because it was really about the family. It was, yes, a that's focus true. On the family, yeah. A lot of focus on the family. So I, I also wonder, wanted to yeah, yeah. No, I wonder if we, we should not make a, a more of a, um, a, a push in that regard to sort of say, look within, the, look within your own family and see what's happening within your own family as to why you've got somatic pain, why you've got chronic pain. Yeah. You know, is yeah. it is it because you want to be awesome within the family, in relation to Michael's movie? I mean, yeah. Uh, I I'm just, I'm bad, just, I'm, I, I got, I got distracted because Michael said his internet went out. So I'm telling him if to come back. Ah, here he comes. I think he might be coming in through his phone. Hey, hello. Hey, are you there through uh, your phone? Uh, um, yeah, I had to do it on my phone. Is that working now? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. I feel like I hear I hear a little uh, echo. Do you hear me echoing? No. Uh, a little um, bit. I don't know. It won't okay. let me turn this think... way. Can you see me? Okay. We yeah. can. Is yeah. there a storm in North Carolina? No, it's our internet's been weird today. I can't tell if you. We can't see you, so we'll just talk. Okay. So right. so uh. I wanted to ask. Can you hear us? Yes. I just, we were just mentioning how amazing, you know, it, you did this movie. It was like a family movie. I mean, everybody was involved and Suki was sort of, you know, this quiet storm, you know, holding up the household and, <laughs> and how was it for your relationship and, and, and all, and like just a, a, a sentence or two about that. Cause you guys really did an amazing, outstanding job of relationship work. Well, it's, you know, uh... It did. It, it, mm. <laughs> it, really you don't have sense. to answer it if you don't want to. <laughs> no, say, no, Tova, just, mind your own business. <laughs> I'm just trying to. No, no, because that's what it's all about. So, of course, you know, that's it's right. important to talk about. Like, you know, it's not just personal stuff, it's relational stuff. And, and it, it's been, I just want to say that, like, 
if anything, it illuminated lots of stuff, which may, you know, so it goes kind of like, uh, you know, like, oh, it's so great. We can have this common language to talk about it. And then it's like, oh, you know, you, your ego rises up and, you know, then it's extra difficult. And so it's kind of like a, you know, it's a, it's a rocky storm of, um, it's so great to have more understanding and presence. And then it's like, uh, you know, I wish I didn't have that understanding and presence. <laughs> and, um, you know, those kinds of things. And and in fact, it's funny because like my, I have this Sarno pain in my hip right now and it's been kind of coming and going and coming and going. And we just went to Miami with um, our kids and the extended family and his daughter, Holly and her husband. And, you know, so, and it's just, and it was difficult artistically and it was difficult personally. And so my leg is really hurting today. Wow. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, of course. And then you start thinking, well, what could it be? Well, you know, it's all that stuff. And um, I don't know if you, you have more specifics to talk about. I can't really remember when we made the movie. Like, well, no, I mean, you know, all, um, all healing is essentially relationship healing. And, you know, if I think one of the things that is most difficult for people um, who are struggling to heal with this is that if they have to do it on their own with the opposition of their family or their core relationships, they're kind of shit out of luck, really. <laughs> Because uh, it's going to be really, really difficult. And, you know, so, so thankfully, we have that ability and that common language to be able to try and address things. And especially, you know, as we all know how important, say, something like the presence process is for that as well. It's about really being able to own what we bring to it. The hard part is figuring out how to not over own what we bring to it. Mm -hmm. So even as we're trying to fix ourselves, we can't fix the relationship by herself as well. So yes. for a lot of people, I think, you know, yes, just recognizing what they're bringing to it um, can help them. But it, it really also involves probably reassessing all of our relationships as well at the same time. So it's really quite complicated. And since we have each other and we're both working on it, you know, it can get frustrating at times, but at least there's, there's you're, you know, you're looking at a, at a horizon and you're on that same road. So it's, it's not, it's uh it's really powerful if you can do this in concert with your partner and if you can't do it in concert with your partner or your family it, it does make it more difficult um and recognizing it allows that to be possible if not still difficult if that makes sense yeah no yeah. I'm, I'm gonna even though it may not sound as good i'm gonna try this because i can't really okay. is that it's all right yeah is that yeah, okay can, can you hear us okay yeah. Yeah, right. fine. Um, Good. you know, I, I really do think there's a study here. I mean, you have no, I just don't know if you have any idea. I mean, we're in the field and I'm, you know, I'm on Facebook a lot, like again, with all these different groups around health, right. both in Israel and, and, and um, America and, and a little bit in Australia and different countries. And you have no idea the amount of people that are, You've, do you have any idea about the amount of people that are on their healing journey because of Sarno? I mean, yeah, yeah. Totally. And look, look, wait, look, let me just look what stemmed from Sarno. Alan Gordon, Schrubiner, Clark, David Hanscom. Right. David Hanscom is making is making an app for his DOC program, which is fascinating, and you know, right. and, and, and curable is also straight from. I mean, there's a no lot. Yeah, the amount yeah, of I, people. I, I, Right. You have birthed, you have birthed a a, 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 a nation. Right. <laughs> Suki, well, no. your great 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 grandmother. He has, <laughs> he has done that. We're just, you know, we're just actually, you know, um, we're we're just Paul. No. We just got down. No, you you have no idea. It's the movie. It's the movie. Also, the movie is. Uh, a I take the kind words. I, I agree, and I and I and I feel really passionate about. I mean, that's why four and a half years later, or five years later, I'm still like almost basically every day trying to do something to get the word out. Speaking of which, one way to do that is we um we just today, an hour before this, um, we pressed up a hundred DVDs because people have been hawking our China for DVDs, um, and we weren't very good at um, sending them. So we do have a hundred DVDs to get out for the holidays. So if anybody wants one, it's on our site. Just all the rage. 
or um, rumor.com slash all the rage. Rose? The trouble is you can't do a DVD anymore. <laughs> I know, but people still want people them. They bug us for it. them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we thought. <laughs> Um, a lot of people are like, how does this computer work? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it on my computer. That's right. I feel like you have the DVD on yeah. a computer. So. Yeah. No, we, we do keep getting asked. No, but I, I look, I'm, I'm very, very happy about how, how it's getting out there. And at the same time, I also, you know, having been like a self distributor and everything, I'm also very aware of how much, um, impact media has on it. And so that's why, you know, it is a little frustrating that like, even when the stuff is coming out, people aren't mentioning Sarno. They're not talking about it, which means they're not finding about the movie and they're not really getting it from the source. They're getting it in the disconnected way. And I think Second that's hand, yeah. really important to have that thing. I also think it's interesting just how stuck people get on, um, like this, the thing that was so frustrating about the New York Times article is it says this 30 year old theory, you know, it's actually a 50 year old theory of his. Uh, do you guys have a fact checker? They were writing about the fact that the science writer read his book from 1991, right? That wasn't when the, the that wasn't when his theory was developed. It's like they had no fact checkers. It's really weird. He gets very upset about um, you know papers of record taking on Sarno's story and and then being dismissive. Yeah, and saying, well, like so, for instance, they they do the same thing as that um, Vox article, which the headline was: "This doctor thinks that pain is all in your head," and thousands of people agree. Like, well, this, 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 is a bigger, this is a bigger <laughs> discussion well, about. Yeah. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? If no, in your it's head? bad. That's enraging. Why? I, mean, I think that enrages. Well, because they're saying, let me tell you the truth. I'm going to give you the facts. So here's the headline. And the headline is factually incorrect. And you, you bring it to their attention. You go, no, I think that's the way I see it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that as the headline. That, the headline being, you know, that it's all in your head. That sort of quote, it's the whole dismissive. phrase, all in your head. And so that gives people a good like foundation to just dismiss him out of hand. He says it's all in yeah. your head. Yeah. Screw that guy. Yeah. He didn't okay, that. but that just reminds me back to when you're a little kid and your pain is dismissed or, you know, you're, someone's been mean to you at school and your parent mm -hmm. says, oh, get over it. Yeah. It's, right. That's the same sort of feeling, isn't it? It's all in your head. You're hurt. Right. Yeah. But but also it's the same feeling when you when you bring something to someone who has power, which is this this oh, true. Uh, the person That's who writes right. the article says, yeah. I know I'm reaching, you know, hundreds of thousands of people with this, and you're telling me that what I said isn't true. I think it's true. I think he said it's all in your head, and thousands of people have been reached. So no, I'm not gonna change it. I'm not gonna address the factual inaccuracy of it. And that's why I was like having such a big problem with the Times is I gave the editor of the Times all this information. I told him these studies were coming out and he said, I would write about it if someone like Tor Wager, you know, was doing a study. So I sent it to him, Tor Wager did the study and he decided, eh, I'm not gonna include it because it's not the same narrative. I, I like this thing saying it's a science writer and she, it's just nonsense. Like, you know, it's either, be scientific or don't be scientific. And if you're not scientific. Yeah. I think the proof is in the pudding. I think what Sarno said is I don't need to study it. I see my patients. You, we are seeing people on their journey. Right. And that and that's going to have to be because journalists have an agenda. And I'm not, you know that better than I do. <laughs> right, but their agenda actually kneecaps progress of, of spreading ideas. And that's where, like, again, I'm talking about the systems being problematic, where the people in the system don't want to get out of their lane, or they get, they, they're basically, it's an abuse of that power, right? He's writing the, he's the editor of the well column, the wellness column in the Times. But he's taken that idea. This is why it's problematic. All these people, all right, I'm a scientist, I'm a journalist. I've heard that Sarno is nonsense. So I'm just going to dismiss it. I'm not going to, without ever reading it. Or you're not going to go to the source, you're saying. They need right, to go, he didn't, go, go, he to the didn't source. even read the study. He didn't include yeah. any of it. He just says, because I'm in this system and this system has dismissed it, I don't need to waste my time. You know, that's the problem. Yeah, I think we're giving the New York Times too much airway. I think Suki's hip feels a lot better. But let me say this, and then your hip hip's going to feel worse. Do you know that the country, the state of Israel, is investing into Pfizer? I mean, you've realized our country's not always, our world's not about the right thing. I mean, like, 
I'm just saying to you, like, this is the life. And I love my country. And I came to Israel and found out that like all the Kashrut were bogus Kashruts. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be in the land, the holy land. Like, I think it's a reality check for sensitive people like Rose and me and Suki and you to like, I, I'm starting to reading a book. This is an amazing. It's called Whatever Arises, Love That. Mm. It's a little bit, it's by this Mark Kahn, who's this K-A-H-N. And it's fascinating because I, I'm realizing that we, we're we sensitive people and we're we're gonna come up against our ourselves more than others and then we're going to calm down and then we're going to and i see i see the beauty and strength in, in you michael and i see the frustration and it's from your mother and father who raised you to be uh, a true um sadiq a sadiq a righteous yeah. person oh, okay. thank like you that. for translating yeah a sadiq <laughs> and you're really you know like you and yet and that's going to be your you're going to be flying that flag on many things i don't even get like political i was very political just what i said just now but i won't get any more political than that how's your hip suki <laughs> <laughs> oh it's all better <laughs> <laughs> well, suki growing up had a thing where if, if she was upset her mom would say go to your room and come out when you're when you're ready to be okay yeah. happy <laughs> and she'd have to come out happy now Right. So. It's a story they think it's so cute and they retell it every time I'm home. Hey, now. I'm like, oh, hey. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. If you guys are raising teenagers, good luck. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's like challenging times. Yeah. It is a little challenging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you said that between your teeth there just now. No, just, I, it was, I mean, it was just, it was very interesting to, you know, just travel all together. Um, you know, and, and, and really doing a lot. And so, you know, a lot of stuff arises and you learn a lot. What's really interesting is that, um, can I say, that uh, our eldest daughter traveled with his older daughter. So she's 28, Fiona's 19. They came together and it was so funny because Holly, the 28 year old, when they arrived said, oh my gosh, she turned into a totally different person when she got to be with you guys. <laughs> She was one way on the plane and then we arrived and she turned into a different way. And it just reminded me of like that whole thing of, yes, it's her first trip back after having been on her own for a couple months. And that idea of either the parents expecting her to be the way she was, or maybe she, you know, thought, or just those dynamics, how they, how they rise up in you and you're like, oh, I'm the child again. You know, now that I'm in the car with the parents, I become a child, perhaps. I mean, I don't even know what it was, it's, but it's, it's a bit, you know. It's a bit automatic. Like I don't think, and, and your children, your daughters will know, will be mindful, very much more mindful than other children. You've taught them that. Yeah, I think, but, but it's interesting. You can both be mindful and also not able to step out of what's going on. It's really hard yeah. when you're young mm -hmm. and very powerful. And yeah. you know, what? like what we're, we're talking about, um, we actually, so Holly is my daughter. I was a sperm donor. And part of the, at one point as we were making this movie, we almost combined those movies. Mm. And this is before I, anyone had found me, but we were making a movie about sperm donation, which is nature versus nurture. And Dr. Sarno's work is very much nature and nurture. Like how do those things combine? And so it was really interesting. This is, we, we went to the beach together, all of us this summer. It was wonderful. It was a very relaxed time. Mm -hmm. This was a little different because we were trying to do a lot and it was a lot about our own work. We were having a show of our, um, about one of our, our first movies with all this art. And there was a lot of, a lot of stuff that had to happen. And there was all this art stuff to do and everyone had different desires and needs. And it got really interesting just to observe how all that really interacted, but also how my relationship with the children that I raised from birth is very different from my relationship from my, with my daughter who I've only known for a couple of years but feel very connected to and very, um, you know, it, the nature is very strong, right? So I didn't have to nurture and we still have a lot in common and there's a lot of my mother and her and, you know, all these different things. And so it's just a really wild and exhausting and wonderful trip, you know, that, um, that was really illuminating. Um, just even like, you know, I could see things about the way my daughters were relating in relation to her and how I would, I was just observing it all and like, wow, I can't really interrupt that or change it, but God, that's pretty intense, you know? And, and that was really interesting. 
and, and that, again, what, what I'm talking about there is that the process of having made the movie and then afterwards and, and continuing to really do the work, to do the yoga, to do the meditation, to do the writing, to do the deep thinking, um, and you're still human. But I didn't, I, I found myself not getting caught up in any of it, but also not able to affect it much either. I just kind of like, what the hell? What am I gonna, okay, that's the way it's gonna roll, but I, what am I gonna do? And doing a lot of um, kind of laughing. <laughs> we like to call it, or at the end of the trip, we called it a hot mess success. That's what that <laughs> a hot what? A, a hot, hot mess, mess success. <laughs> it applied our art show. It applied to the trip with the family. It was just a hot mess. Right. And, and, and a lot a of that had to do with, um, you know, having some intention mm -hmm. with that expectation. So nothing went as we planned, but it was uh, fine. It was fun. Yeah. It was interesting. And it was all really good. But it was certainly not what we expected. But we also let go of expectation very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I really, th what do you think about another movie about <clears throat> body, mind, the intimate connect? Like, again, I see, I see, I see something They've happening. They've got one, Tova, coming up that they can inter intertwine, intertwine with it. About the sperm yeah, donor? Well, yeah. Well, we have, it's a whole series. We've been following people for like 15 years and we just didn't have the resources or the means to make it. We, um, basically, at, right when we started making this movie before, um, Harper was born, or right after Harper was born, so that would be 15 years ago, um, a woman in the hair salon in the corner said to me, you know, you got to go for your boy. Because I would drop off Fiona to hang out in the hair salon while I walked the baby and the dog. And I was like, baby, dog, girl, hell no, I am done. But then as I walked out, I was like, oh my God, I probably have some and they want to know who I am, right? Um, because- You mean I, you, ha you might have a son? I might have hundreds, honey. <laughs> I'm so naive. I'm so naive. <laughs> and so I didn't, I did, I, but like, so when that happened, when that awareness came to me, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I, I need to look into this. And I, and then I saw that a lot of donor conceived people are extremely upset about being donor conceived. Um, oh. Because but they don't want to know, they don't want to be found. No, no, it's intentional yeah. adoption. So the donor conceived, the children are feeling a, a lack of agency and, okay. and a lack of, of connection to their biological heritage and, you know, just wanting identity, wanting to understand who they are and not being able to. But it's even more complicated because many times they were like, especially when it first, they weren't even told. Yeah. Like there's a woman, she actually went to my high school here in Chapel Hill and she made a movie called Thank You for Coming. And she... Um, when only when I think she, so her father, you know, her, when she was born, the man that was her known as her father was not actually her father. And she didn't know that he, there was a sperm donor. And then her parents got divorced. And when she was 11, her mother died. So she went to live with her father and um, his wife, who she wasn't related to either of them at all, but didn't know. But right. Knew somehow. But, but eventually figured it all out and then found her sperm donor father and has a relationship with him. The point is, if you are living in a family and you're adopted and not told you're adopted, it's really confusing. Or if you're living in a family and you're told we adopted you, you're so lucky. Well, you can't really, you know, you have to, it, it's, it gets complicated, right? So a lot of people were upset. So I started looking into it and I wrote an op-ed saying it shouldn't be anonymous. Even as the former anonymous donor, I realized <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't seem ethical. It doesn't seem... It, it's problematic and we haven't actually questioned the ethics of it. It's complicated, right? Um, not that donor conception shouldn't happen or any of that, or that it, it's just, we have to be thoughtful about how it's gonna affect the children, wow. you know? Yeah. And um, so I wrote this op-ed and immediately a woman wrote me and said, oh my God, I'm, a, I'm donor conceived. I love what you wrote. I'm a musician. Um, and another friend wrote me and said, did you know I was adopted? And I didn't. Three days later, the girl who wrote to us ended up living with us for like four months because she was train hopping across America as a crusty punk. And- um, Crusty punk. So, like, j j you know, just like, um, like <laughs> you would see it on New York streets, like the crusty punks were like basically homeless youth who didn't really have a place to live and were oh, musicians. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So she- so, Unbelievable. You really well, are. Well, there's a lot of freedom. You know, you're just out there. She was train hopping. Like she literally rode a freight train from New Orleans to New York. 
and was happened to be on the way when she wrote to us. And so, so anyway, it's complicated, but she became the main character. And then we went over and met my friend who was adopted. And then that woman found her Iranian birth. Anyway, we have all these different characters. So you have a follow. movie, you have, you have a, doc a documentary coming up. Yeah, that we have been making. And I found my donor number and I put myself up on the list, but nobody found me until my mom was in the emergency room with pneumonia when I got a text from my cousin saying, um, I just got off the phone with your daughter, Holly. Do you remember you were a sperm donor? Oh and this was um, nine months before my mom passed away. And so I met her on my, the day before my 50th birthday. That's Holly. And so we've, you know, become really close. Um, and now, you know, it's amazing for uh, Fiona because she has this older sister. Very who, close by, yeah. Up in New Jersey with her when she's in college. And so they, yeah, it's been really great for both of them. Okay. And you're, and you're you're in good terms with the mother of Holly's mother. No, I haven't met her, but they did just watch the movie together, and it helped her mother with her <laughs> headaches a lot. <laughs> another another <laughs> one <laughs> bites the <Yeah>. dust. <laughs> um, but yeah, Holly watched the movie, and she was like, but she actually had a lot of back problems and was doing yoga uh, when we first met, and uh, um, but all she could really. Do with well, the first time she watched it was kind of just oh my god oh my god oh god but what she said it really helped when she watched it a year later with her mom. <laughs> Michael, you know I don't know what Rose the statistic Rose would hear in the hospital, but I would hear in chiropractic school the eighty percent of human beings are having back pain. Now, how much of that eighty percent is psychosomatic? Rose, what would you experience like working in the hospital and being the nurse and then being? Well, they don't come to hospital except for surgery. That's true. And then they're in and out, and you don't actually get to uh, to talk to them about the problem. So, right. and they think they're healed. But you right. know, I think the research says that um, in one of the recent researches is that the the uh, placebo people have a better outcome than the surgery people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and of course, it takes longer to rehabilitate because of the surgery. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty tragic, really. Right, and there's also yeah. tissue damage from the surgery. Even That's if it's right, yeah. Deep. Well, scar tissue, yeah. Not so much tissue damage, but scar tissue. Right, scar tissue. Which then right. becomes a problem again. So, right. and then people go back for surgery to get rid of the scar tissue, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think, but no, it's, it's, it was, it's an industry. So, you know, the industry keeps on going, as, as uh, Dr. Hanscom would say. You know, you go, you go to university to become a surgeon and save the world, and then it becomes an industry, and you have to keep up your lifestyle, don't you? So, yeah, yeah sad. Yeah. I, I think what's interesting, you know, just circling back to this idea of since the movie, it's like, you know, it's been, it's, an, it's, a, it's a constant evolution of understanding and awareness, and um, I yeah. think... Uh, you know, this whole idea of healing is, I really do think it's really important to not think of healing as a des destination, but instead a process. Because if you feel like, okay, I've healed, it's kind of like the shark that's no longer swimming. You, you stop growing. And if healing is not, um, healing is not a physical process. It's a physical, emotional, and mental process, right? And so what, what is healing? You know, and, and that's well, really what it comes actually, to. It's about growth, isn't it? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that's my point. It's that, and, and growth yeah. should never stop. So we feel like it, yeah. once you stop growing, you've stopped living, really. And then you've started dying, you know? Yeah. And yeah. also growth is an inner growth, isn't it? Like, yeah. Like that feeling of, like, by the time you're 30, you sort of have grown, supposedly. And then you sort of feel like you're 30 forever more in a way, don't you? <laughs> Except for the right. aches and pains. Yeah. I Yeah, I definitely feel that way in... Um, you know, especially, you know, just even in terms of like the the process of making art or becoming an artist, it was not, you know, it was a, a process of becoming. And it took me a long time to even be able to articulate or feel like I could say, oh, I'm an artist, because I felt like an artist was someone else, someone who knew how to do something that, and I had to learn how to do it. And I and I still feel very much that way. Um, but, but it's but, within you, actually. It's not, it's within, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, once you feel like, okay, now I'm an artist, then you're no longer an artist, probably. Once you've arrived, you, you've you hit the end of your you journey. So you should always be like, what was your thing? It's that you should always be arriving 
what was that thing? Um, whatever that. arises, love that. Like yeah, well, just wherever you're arriving, love where you are. Yeah. You're there, you know? Well, you know, like the, new, the new German medicine, which is very big in Europe, um, you've heard about the new German medicine. This doctor, um, his son died of cancer, and then he got cancer, and he began, he changed his entire field of study to understand the body, and it's a very holistic approach, and they believe that cancer comes from a conflict inside the body. But that the, when the symptom comes, the healing begins. Right. Or the, or the healing can begin if you recognize the symptom is related to the, what's going exactly. on. Exactly. That's like what it So Yeah. So it's like that's where you have an opportunity, you know, to. And, and there's so much. Look, there's so much of this happening, again, I don't, you know, in, in, in Europe and the continent. And you were, again, let's, can you talk a little bit about the different countries that, you and Suki went to to show the movie, or more or less the the places that have your movie, like the contacts you've had, because that's where it's exponentially growing as well, and we don't even know what's happening in other countries. Right. Uh, yeah, we we didn't get to travel as much as we might have liked, but we did go to Argentina, and that was really interesting because there was a doctor who happened to come see it, and he just had a really powerful reaction to it. Um, and was, I, you know, I don't know if he was able to get much done there, but he, it was interesting just to see how deeply it connected it and made sense to him. Wow. And it's, it's interesting also because in Buenos Aires, it's, you know, I think they have more people in therapy in Buenos Aires than anywhere else in the world. So it really connected. And you have, you have a lot of like, ex, you know, expat, like people moving in, in and out of that space. And, um, you know, Australia and Israel, both of those, I mean, the screening in Israel, the screenings, I say the, the, the really profound one was the one at the Cinematheque where there was a lot of really amazing um, conversations afterwards. Or Greece. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, I got a call the other day from a woman who's going to be on the Hebrew show and probably on the uh, global show. She, she's, she's profoundly affected by this. She had horrible pelvic things and she did have some sexual trauma. And she got connected with me through the, through a scientist who's, 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 who's very good friends with one of the authors of the Boulder, um, one of the guys, Yoni. Yoni. And this is, this is Technion and Haifa University. And, and we're, we're getting together two days on a Zoom to, to show this might hurt to a bunch of doctors. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm thinking to myself, have they seen even all the rage? Like, we should do a double feature because I feel like all the rage backs up is, is the umbrella for this might hurt. What it, what it points to is, I mean, metaphor speaks to more people, right, to, to a wider audience. But it also doesn't reach some people. Like, so, you know, there, there, there's no, you need, there's not just one medicine. There's not just one idea. There's not one quick fix. And, and, you know, what I was saying earlier, like I'll notice when someone is, you know, new to the ideas and they'll express an understanding that, um, that expresses some openness, some awareness that it might work. I won't, I really have learned not to offer it to people who aren't ready because it's a waste of both of our time. But when I can exactly. tell someone is probably ready, um, I will just always just send it to them. And there was someone recently on one of the TMS things that, I, the woman was desperate, but there was a sense of maybe this will work. And so then I actually had a lot of back and forth with this person where it was up and down, up and down. Like, I, I can't get off the gabapentin. I, uh, I was like, just, okay, here it is. You know, I, I, I there's nothing can I, really I can say. You, did you know two, two, three weeks ago, Rose and I had a show with two women who healed CRPS. We got, we, we got recommended them. They know forest. They know forest. Mm -hmm, right. And, uh, they got recommended to us, and their sh story was amazing. Yeah. CRPS. I mean, this is something like the hospitals are opening up centers. Right. Which is the worst thing they could possibly do. And the woman in the movie. The, with, Wait, let me let the, me be clear. They're the investing in, the in centers. <laughs> they are, and 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 they they're are. Investing and in each there. center, each center does have. They understand the psychological effect. They know what happens after right. trauma. They know. But, um, and in the movie is the blonde haired lady. Remember Rose, the, the one whose boyfriend was a jerk in the movie with the two feet 
It's in the it's in the trailer. Her feet, her her swollen oh, foot. Oh, Amy, 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 Amy Skinner. Mm -hmm. Oh, in all the rage. I thought that you was were CRP. Yeah, yes. I was thinking you were talking about this yeah. might hurt, but yeah. no, and do you know yeah. every single time um, I talk to someone, I say, do you know that when Michael was sitting in Irene Feinblatt's office and he was crying and then laughing, that's ISTDP. You know, right, like, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you know, it's fascinating. Like the, and I think ISTDP. I mean, we, again, we found out from um, Patricia Coughlin which is this amazing therapist that Sarno and Divin Lu met each other. Mm. Suki, you're shaking your head. Did you know that? Like, No, but I mean, that makes sense. That's uh, it, to me, that makes a lot of sense. They and knew about each other and they influence each yeah. other. And, right. and, and they, and, and ICDP is really an incredible. And I think he said, Sarno, no, he said about the presence yeah. process, but he recommended Irene Feinblatt. Yeah. Mm. Did he say ISTDP? She's an ISTDP therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I mean I just knew she was. She, I think it was, it was partly because she had written something for um, the Divided Mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I think, but that goes back to the same thing. Like with IDSTP, the person who is being in, engaging in it actually has to be committed to. To pushing through, yeah, it's just yeah, well, never, they you don't the take them on board. Not, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's a collaborative board. process. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Michael, can you give the audience an idea of actually the broad influence? Like, you know, you've talked about Argentina, you've talked about Israel, you've talked about um, America, but through Vimeo now or whatever it's called, there, mm -hmm. there's a whole group of people in in Europe and all over the world that are now up, taking up the movie would you just talk a little bit about that uh, what you've seen since it's been available yeah well that, that's the thing and, I, I you know what I was saying is I I feel a little bit disconnected from all that because I'm not really seeing it uh you know I'm not it's it's not um I I, I don't really hear from people very often so maybe okay Every two weeks or so, but I so I'm not I'm not having much interaction around it. So it doesn't I it doesn't I don't really have any awareness, and and you know it it you know it probably gets watched um, fifteen to twenty times a week, as far as I know. And then there's Amazon, which I don't really get the data on. So it doesn't you know it doesn't really feel as as. Oh, connected. so you don't get the data on Amazon? Oh, okay. Because I thought you yeah. got the data on all of them. That's why I. But I, I they're, not, they're not as clear. Like the data on. Um, on Vimeo, it's that, that's directly to us. Amazon, it goes through like a third party and it's just very complicated. And so, I, no, I just, I don't really, yeah, like I'll try to tweet about it a little bit and I'll try to continue writing, but like I'll write these things and they, they get rid, you know, by four or five people. Because so I don't really have a platform. Like even let's say with the Facebook page, it has like 8,000 people following it, but generally two or three people see them. Yeah. I mean, you well, know, say right. seen by like yeah. 10 people. So what about Insta Instagram, Instagram. Yeah, but I've, I've got like uh, 32 followers. So it doesn't really do anything. Can I ask you a, a question? Um, so did after after the movie, what did John Sarno like? To, what, what was your Suki like talking to John Sarno after the movie? Like, can you share a little bit about your last days of, of talking with John Sarno, did you, I know you've been doing, like, did you see him when he was sick? Did he contact you? Did you contact him? We, we were in contact with his family and um, he wasn't, he wasn't doing well. I mean, he barely made it to the movie. I think it was very moving for him to uh, get uh, the standing ovation and to, to see it. And they sent a very nice note and, um, you know, just, just recently another note just saying, you know, watch it again. And it's, we're very thankful. Um, and we, and you know, his wife is a, you know, a little bit older as well. And so I do try, like when the studies come out, I'll send them to them. I'll try to keep them as connected or as aware uh, um, as possible mm -hmm. as I can. Um, so uh, I, I mean, I think they were appreciative of it, but I think it's also, you know, you got to imagine it was a, probably a little bit, it was a little bit of a difficult process because he wanted some control over the message and what it was. And I don't think it was exactly what we set out to make, but sometimes uh, with art and communication, you know, what was oh, yeah. the name of that book again? 
um, whatever arises, love that. And, and that, I, I, that was the philosophy that we took in making it, but you can't get everyone to love everything you love, right? <laughs> Your philosophy. And um, you know, so for instance, I think they were a little bit um, frustrated when we said, you know what, we were really not, we may not even use the term TMS as we make the movie. And it wasn't that we weren't gonna honor what his thing was, it was just that when you use the term TMS, people get caught up in the science and does that blah, 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 like is it proven or, but it's like, oh. rather than give someone a reason to spit out their soup, you know, you you just say, isn't the soup lovely? So you you just, in other words, you know, trying to, try to, trying to kneecap the conflict. So, which is some reason, you know, I can understand why say the Boulder study doesn't mention Dr. Sarno. It's because they didn't want to get attached to him uh, and then have it be dismissed for that reason. Uh, I also think it's a little problematic because it kind of then buries that history. So how can you do that in a little bit more thoughtful way? And, and you know, I actually, I like I got an email yesterday, someone was really upset because um, they only know about the movie because they were complaining about back pain or Dr. Sarno and I sent them the movie and then they got the book and they're like, it doesn't, I, like what, what? How did they not even mention Sarno in 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 the? I, I don't even understand this. He was really upset. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the, the, all, in, look, all the doctors that are were in it, their books are are um, credited. Like you I always look at the foreword of the book, and it's credited to Doctor Sarno. I mean, they're for, everyone's first book, Schrubiner's, and it's right, right. You know, but the study doesn't but mention, it, and so then exactly. the, the world that go, the story that goes out in the world doesn't included whereas the, the other study you know is, this is based on this work and i and i and I, I understand why but i also think it actually kind of limits it a little bit too because then you're going to connect it to that larger community that's like will then go out and be like this is what i'm talking about this is that thing and it, i think it, it probably even slows it a little bit in some ways maybe that's what i'm saying about like say the system like afraid of the people in the system being like dismissive but you also slow the ad adaptation of the kind of the broader concepts. It's like just missed as like, it's, I don't know, you know, it's just, com it's, it's complicated, but like yeah. I'm saying, I, I also understand why it's the same reason we didn't want to put TMS in the movie, you know, because that would make people just dismiss it as being woo quackery because there was no scientific proof. Or just, you know, the, the factual TMS, what does that stand for? And what does that mean? And is it proved? And yeah. Right. Well, blah, people blah, chase blah. the information yeah. as a distraction. Right. Right. As well. Like, exactly. oh, I've got it's more defense. to get yeah. That, yeah. Go ahead, Bruce. I was wondering, as you were speaking, who was the audience? Who were you anticipating the audience for? The people who have got the chronic pain or the people who treat the people with chronic pain? Because actually, for me, the audience was the people, the sufferers of chronic pain, not the experts. Do you know what I mean? Well, so th this is the thing. We were trying to reach both of them. And if you if you tried to prove it to the experts, and and That's so we good. did a lot of screenings, and we in that living room over there, we did like sixty small group screenings, and at first, the first feedback we got was, you know, this sounds interesting, but I need a little more proof. So we put in a little <laughs> more proof, and then they're like, oh, well, that's pretty compelling, but I still have this doubt. Could you put in more proof? And as we did that, and then it just became this lump and mess, right? Yeah. So we took all that out. And those same people were like, oh, wow, well, this is working so much better. What did you do? And what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> we I took ask out you, all the crap. You, what, yeah. about, what about the, uh, the senator? The senator who said, Wait, what's, that was an amazing s Thank clip. You. What about oh, him? Yeah. Let's contact him. I let's don't, let's, I let's don't burn some bras I have here. I tried <laughs> contacting him. No, I mean, I, I, I spoke to his office a dozen times, and they just never respond. They never write back. They go, oh, okay, I'll, I'll get it you to him. Send him personally the clip, what he was saying. Call him up. I did. I sent it to his assistant. You can't get you to can't him. You can't get him. to him. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, let me look him up in the, in the 411. No, they, you can't reach these people. <laughs> you reached him. You found him. You got there. Sure. I went but the, to the Senate no. hearing. I didn't get to him. <laughs> He invited Sarno to the Senate hearing. And, and I then, followed him you know. in with my camera. They couldn't kick my ass out. No, actually, right. I followed Sarno into his meeting with him, and then they kicked me out of the meeting so they could actually have a real conversation. They did. So 
you have a, don't you have a, no you don't have any right I, you know me i'm like don't you have any you don't right have a right to, to walk into his living room and punch him no, in his to mouth call him and say i need a follow up i need a follow up meeting I'll send you the whole series of emails that I sent to his assistant, and then you can you can call him. If you but, want. but to answer your <laughs> good luck, answer, Tyva. Good luck. Well, <laughs> after the screening, it's funny because that's it. It was it, he was a little farther along in uh, his decline, unfortunately, at the screening. But it was so meaningful. I was so so happy that he could be there in that group setting with all of the people, and you felt it and you, you understood saw his it. face remember rose this face where when when the senator said that you saw his face right right and then and it, the closest thing i can and liken it to is uh the scene where he gets the thank you dr sarno book uh that became when we were shooting that i just remember being okay this is the end of the movie because he was so grateful and just you know, content. I mean, he was, he's never one for big show, especially of positive feelings, I feel like. I think he, was he represses, I think he represses feelings. Don't you think, Dr. Don't you think John yeah, Sarno? I mean, he he said so, that I've experienced, uh, you know, more of these uh, symptoms than any of patient I've ever treated. Yeah, and that's how he knew yeah. that this was, uh, this theory was correct because wow. he was able to yeah. get past it. And so that, thank you, Dr. Sarno book, really made him extremely content <laughs> and uh that's the feeling that that screening you know when he was able to sort of stand up and and take a bow basically i mean he didn't take a bow but yeah. you know that was the the same kind of feeling Amazing. and, and you know actually they like, say to us oh people must be recognizing you no they don't but him like he would be checking into hotel and they'd be like sarno like <laughs> the book he, <laughs> it happened a lot. And that, you know, when I do, you know, you, I will find so often, like there's a guy, there was a scene we didn't include in the movie, but I was um, out showing Battle for Brooklyn in, Sa in San Francisco and I was being interviewed by this guy. So, so what's next? And I told him, and he goes, oh yeah, never heard of him. And then I said, we're making a movie about Dr. Sona, never heard of him. And I said, oh, well, so, you know, he had this theory that um, back pain is connected to your emotions. Oh, that book, that book saved my life. <laughs> and, and it, he read it 20 years earlier. <laughs> You know, but it's just like it's he it, it, it really that book. And again, that, that goes to, um, you know, different type of media that existed in that moment when that book came out. The, that book was handed out. You didn't have the Internet. And then even with the Internet, then that started to spread. But, yeah, it's just it was a really amazing phenomenon what he was able to connect to in terms of the zeitgeist when people were ready for it. And yes, well, that's what comes. Sorry, that's what comes to mind all the time with this work. When the when the student is ready, the teacher appears, mm -hmm. and it's just so true. You can mm -hmm. ask, like you you're saying about, we need more proof. We need more proof, and until it actually sinks in that I'm ready to do the work, um, you can give them all the proof in the world that you that you've got, but it won't make a difference. Right, and I think yeah. you know, I think this whole process has been really complicated um, by the political turmoil. I mean, we, we are living, uh, I, I'd like to not think of the end times, but in, in really the most fractious times of, of, our, of my life, but it mirrors a, a fractious time of my birth. You know, I was born in 69, which was an era of kind of complete tumult. And I think we're, we're kind of in a, like, a, you know, the sine and cosine era of that, where we're back in that space. And, you know, we can look to that and go, okay, we kind of made it out of that. And I, I think that's the case here, but it, it is a really crazy time and it makes it really hard to communicate because when people are in a rage, they have a really hard time listening. And mm. so if you're trying to communicate something that's really incumbent on people being able to be open and expansive and to listen, Now's not the real time, you know, it's hard. And it's the time when they need it the most, which is the most frustrating about that. Yeah. Wow, wow. That, that's a very good, I've written that down. People have a, in a rage have a hard time listening. Or, or oh, they're stuffing their rage and they're not listening either. It's either or. Yeah, that's lovely, yeah. Right, so it's, yeah. You, you can have rage and not even be connected to it, but you still can't listen because you're stuck in a very that's limited- That's right, you don't know. Yeah, right. You don't know you're in a rage. That's the that's the problem, right? Like, it, like as, as you were saying about society at the moment, it's in a rage, isn't it? 
Yeah, totally. it doesn't see the rage. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, oh, look at all that rage out there. But it's like we're all in rage, you know? Yeah, and I, I've, I'm still questioning, like, why you called it, why you didn't, like, why even Sarno talked about the word rage. He didn't say anger. He went right to the word rage. And I rage honestly, right, rage is what? Blinding. Wow. Anger, anger disrupts your vision, but rage completely blinds you from it. Wow. Yeah. It's a great and if I that know. rage is repressed, then you're trapped in this little deer blind and you can only get shot. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you can't don't see think, your You don't think fear is like, like when you thought about the emotions, Luke, you think well, about this. Well, fear is blinding as well. Yeah. I mean, anything that makes you feel an extreme of a need to escape or lash out, they're blinding. You're not thinking rationally or reasonably. So it could have been all the sadness, all the grief, all the fear, all the rage. It could have been any of those. No, it couldn't no. because all the rage is a pun. It's a, it's a, you know, it's both things at once. Something that's really popular is all the rage. I wonder where that comes from. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's not all the fear, it's all the rage. And so that was really what it is. It's all the rage to have this rage to have, you know, th there was a little, it was a little bit lighter con than, you know, because actually the, the original title was the story of pain because everybody's pain has a story. Wow. But that was just kind of too, uh, <laughs> too mundane. Yeah. And is the title yeah. Safe by Sarno? Rose is always reminding me and Safe by Sarno. Is the title? It's, it's, it's the parenthetical. It was parenthetical. Well, that's a big that word. Really what's, what, what does that word mean? What? Parenthetical, like in parentheses. It's oh, kind of oh. like, yeah. So it's Saved by Sarno, parentheses, or, or All the Rage, parentheses, Saved by Sarno. So it's something you kind of notice, but isn't really the title. And the reason for that is more search engine optimization than anything else, but also honoring him. Of course. You know, so making sure yeah. that it was really clear it was about about him, but not that it was just him. It's really about it's really about all the rage. And it, it you know, we set out to do something that was about Dr. Sarno, but in order to tell a story, you have to have a character. And 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 he just was not really interested in being the kind of character that you can tell a story about. You could make a biographical documentary film about him, but that's not what we do, and we didn't know how to do it, and we would just done it in a crappy way. Well, and, and and but even even the other movies are like with the Bruce Lipton and the Joe Dispenza, they're you know in Heal the movie Heal and they're talking to the different people. You did that, but it was still, it still ev ev um, evolved in a beautiful way around the story. I don't know how you guys make movies. It fascinates me how you put everything together. And yeah, I I could add to that if I could. <laughs> it's yeah. about listening and hearing from the heart. Mm -hmm. But really, in the, at the end of the day, it, it was about willing to be a little bit naked. Yeah. A, a yeah. big, big naked. Actually. With your clothes yeah. on, with your naked, like uh, emotion, um, intimate with your clothes on. A naked How about heart. Anniversary. I'll. <laughs> Go ahead. No. <laughs> What'd you say, Rose? A naked heart he had. Yeah. 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 Open. I, and it, I, I think I've told you this, but like at the very first screening at the. Uh, Doc NYC Film Festival um, where he was at, the first question wasn't where the question was like, it was, that was really brave of you to, to be naked like that. And I was like, oh, it wasn't really that brave. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, what? and then when the reviews started coming out, I was like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Because if you do <laughs> I just, really show... I kind of want to say the, heart, the heartfelt thing, even that I think about, you know, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, it's almost like um, you know, in Hebrew, we say there's this, um, it's, nothing's a coincidence. Like it's these spiritual, like things that happen for a reason. Yeah. I mean, the fact that like the, the fact that your father died during the screening, during the making of the movie, just blow, I think about it a lot because right. of my father issues. I think about you losing your father at that time as part of the movie. Mm. I, I just, and your mother, I mean, and the, the beach and the, you know, the ashes, it just, it, you have no, I, it's profound, mm. profound yeah. what happened. It just, for that to happen, you know. Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, he was alive when we started the movie. And I think when he died, I think it was, we had not given up fully yet. He died in what, 2006. 2006. 
Yeah, we were already. We were. Already, so again, already, the movie lasted like ten years. I'm thinking the movie was. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, so we had kind of we hadn't really um, figured out how to make it, and even that kind of put a kibosh on it for a while because it was just too much stuff going on, and we couldn't figure out how to do it. And we had to kind of figure out how to. We, you know, we we. I mean, the the reality is, is like it's funny because um, you know people are really angry that the movie just isn't free. Like, why don't you just make it free? <laughs> really. Okay, sure. $5 like, what, is free to me. It, it is. I, yeah, but, you know, people, like, the, just the way the world is, like, it's strange. It is really strange how little value people give to media, and they want it to be free, and that's also part of, like, Spotify. Everyone just thinks artists should create things but not see value you know, in it. If it's helpful, just give it out for free. And I want to say, well, if a vaccine is helpful. Hmm. It should be given out for free, but but which, which it kind of which is. Which it kind of is. But, but but the point that I was really making is just, um, oh, yeah, you know, part of the reason it took forever to make is that we had no funding. Like, it's we couldn't do it as our job. No one would pay us. So we had to do all kinds of other stuff. And, all, you know, no one will ever pay us for our movies. It's really like we just have to figure out how to make it, which I think makes them better, but it makes them less sellable, right? So I think over time, they they're going to... They age well, in some ways, um, because the resonance of them is more clear. Um, but it's a lot harder process with less support. Wow. So, for example, when Michael's father passed away, it wasn't clear at that time by any means that that was going to be part of the story. Oh, okay. You know, it just, that wasn't. It seems like it was like step after step after step. But you're right. It, I'm thinking like it, but it's it, 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 was, it made it, it made it so real. Well, yeah. stories are very in respect. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. very influential in the whole picture, though. Thank you. Yeah, it was very yeah. Right, but yeah. but there was also this incredible pressure not to have it be personal because who the fuck are you? Why should anyone care about you and your stupid fucking father? Which really, a lot of people have said. All I mean, the movies, but movies. Look, you know, Finding Joe. Finding Joe is about Joe Campbell. It talks about the human condition. There's a story. Somebody gets sick. Somebody gets better. It's the end. This is exactly what the your movie was. It was a it was a right. human story. But what's interesting is like documentaries are not supposed to do that. Documentaries have a whole other formula. So what we do bring is that kind of idea of storytelling to documentaries. But then people are like, oh, you don't really know what you're doing, or why did you put yourself in it? You know, a documentary is about Dr. Sarno. Why are you, in, you know, it was, it was all that. And, and, you know, and so that, I mean, that's what all the reviews were, right? right. Like the, the LA times headline was um, director hijacks his own film. <laughs> so I'm just saying that's the story that gets told. That's what I'm you not. You realize not, that was, that's the success. Isn't it true <laughs> that when you have people that don't like what you're doing, it means you're successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> but the problem is, if the people who don't like what you do have incredible amounts of power and influence and they just when there's already you. a glut of, of <laughs> content and people are like looking for a reason not to go see something it's the same reason like the editor at the new york times like i don't have to read sarno all these other people told me it's bullshit, mm. right so i don't have to watch this movie because uh the reviewers gary goldstein told me that the guy's like a narcissistic dick that i don't have to care about Look at the people in your movie. Look at the people that. I, 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 yeah, I, but I've got to watch people. the movie, Tyler, to see them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right, Rose. Yeah, you got to watch it to see it. And if you have a reason not to, that that's what that's what my. Then you never know. You're never gonna yeah. know because you haven't seen it. I mean, and because you're so enmeshed in the world, you you it seems like everybody is watching it and stuff. What a you rejection! Know. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's not so much, It's more of like I'm thinking it's on everybody's coffee table. I'm thinking the book's on everybody's shelf and everybody. This is how I think, and that's the way that yeah, yeah. my law of attraction is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it is. It's a wonderful and incredible thing. I feel. I mean, honestly, if two people had had the kind of healing that thousands have had, it would have been worth it. If I could say, if we could save two people from intractable pain, it wow. would be worth it. Thousands of people have, really have let us know that it has changed their life. Wow. We, 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 I got yeah. nothing to complain about, except that I wish it could help more people. Right. Yeah. In, in yeah. that vein, Tova, would you write the link to the uh, documentary, please, yeah. on the sidebar so people yeah. have got it? 
Yeah, I know we've done it over and over, but do it again because someone might just watch this and think, yes, I'm going to I'm going to follow that up and see if I can clear Michael, why I've got this yes, kind of pain. You're right. You know, Michael, you're not a member. Are you a member of um of mind body syndrome, the thing that was started I am by not any club that would have me? Because you 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 have no idea. There's new people there every right. minute joining yeah. that Facebook page. Do you know about I that, could, Suki, this Facebook page started by Steve Ozanic and then taken over by these two guys that were on our show, uh, Eddie and, um, and um, Brad? Yeah, there's like, there's a half, half dozen. Yeah, oh yeah, so I, I will, like I'm saying, like I try not to be on Facebook so much, but like that's what I was saying before. Sometimes I'll see the new messages and I'll be like, okay, this person needs the movie and I'll just send it to them directly. Well, everything you so, put, everything you send out, I send to, mind body yeah. it's yeah. also it's 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 uh doctor you know dr um clark is on there a lot he's pushing the pbda just thousands and thousands of people yeah, and new I, people I, every day i know and i think it's awesome and i think also like i think brad is doing a great job of mm. like i did i do go on there sometimes i just don't I, i'm very i been caught up with other things i haven't done it as much but yeah i talk, like i said i try to engage when i can but it's you also write it's beautiful you write beautiful um Post. whatever you call them you write beautiful articles about yeah. many things you know and i post them i repost them you be you do beautiful post and why Rose have you put down the mind body syndrome because this woman asked about the facebook page i think she's asking you oh okay right yeah. and you also the what is your facebook page the um all the rage yeah yeah and there's the all the doc.com but um, yeah. but actually, like I, I guess we got to go in a minute. But did some any? If there's anyone who's listening who has a question, I'm happy to do it. Are, are, on the phone, I can't yeah, see anything. Yeah, lots of people are listening, but no one seems to be. I think you're capturing you. You know, I think you're. There's lots of people watching, but there's not that many questions. Um, and uh, uh, we are going to have you in a few weeks with Matthew. who's very excited. Right. And yeah. I we didn't, we didn't even mention TMS Wiki. I mean, that's an incredible format and a place where there's so much information there and it so is. much happening i mean um so it, it really is it is a process this your your both of your experience with this and being so available to rose and i being so helpful i think it's i mean rose and i are just we're, we're believe it or not i'm speechless believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, uh, on that note, I, I I agree. I like so. I think that you guys, as in the same way that you're saying nice things, to us, I I really do think you're doing incredible work, and you are creating a lot more connectivity, right? So you're finding out about one person from another person, but you're also taking that extra step to go back to the other person and say, hey, you need to meet this person, and. So I think that things like this are really in incredibly important for creating that connectivity. And I think it's interesting, you guys are essentially outside of a system in some sense, right? But you're you're building new systems. And you know, that that is an incredible thing that can happen with the internet. It's also a problematic thing that can happen in the internet, but I think you're using it for good. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Suki. Yeah. Thank you so much and have a lovely rest yeah. of the day and sleep no. well, Tova. We've had a yeah. beautiful conversation. Thank you. It Thank was you amazing. All. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. It's going to be on our YouTube channel if you want to watch it again. If any of your daughters want to see you anywhere. They want okay. to see much less of us. <laughs> okay. All the best. Stay well. Yes. Have a good Christmas season. We'll see you soon. Yeah. yeah. All the best. Bye. Blessings. Bye.